Next, we will discuss how to visually summarize data. We will start with learning how to organize categorical data because it is the simplest type of data. Thus, everything that we can do with categorical data can be also done with all other types of data. Consider the following data set obtained from asking 40 students their political party affiliation. One way of organizing categorical data is to construct a table that contains the list of all possible values. For each value, we can find its frequency, the number of times that the value occurs in the data set. To obtain the frequencies, we are going to go through the data and use tally. Adding up all the tallies gives us the following frequencies, 20, 3, and 17. A table that lists the distinct values along with their frequencies is called the frequency distribution table. One way to validate the table is to find the total, that is add the entries in the frequency column and check whether the sum is equal to the sample size. Using tally can save us a lot of time when constructing a frequency distribution table, because when using the tally method, you would only have to browse through the data set once. Try not using the tally, and you'll see what I mean. In summary, to construct a frequency distribution table for categorical data, we have to first list the distinct values of the observations in the data set in the first column of the table. Next, for each observation, we would place a tally mark in the second column of the table in the row of the appropriate distinct value. And last, we would count the tallies for each distinct value and record the totals in the third column of the table. Let's compare the results from the same survey of a different class. We see that the number of people that support Democrats in the other class is 40. Can we conclude that the Democrat supporters prevail in the other class twice as much? Well, not if you see the entire frequency table. Turns out that a frequency table doesn't show the whole picture. We can compare apples to apples if we compare the corresponding relative frequencies. To compute the relative frequency, we divide the frequency of an observation by the total. Note that a relative frequency can be written as a fraction, decimal, or percentage. The sum of the entries in the relative frequency column is always 1 or 100%. A listing of the distinct values and their relative frequencies is called a relative frequency distribution table. Now we can compare apples to apples and see that the Democrats are actually minority in the second class. In summary, to construct a relative frequency distribution table for categorical data, we first obtain a frequency distribution table of the data and then divide each frequency by the total number of observations to obtain a relative frequency. One way to visualize a frequency table is to draw a two-dimensional coordinate plane with the categories on the horizontal axis and the frequencies on the vertical axis. For each category, then we draw a bar above the corresponding label with the height equal to the frequency. Such display of frequencies is called a frequency bar chart. The frequency of each distinct value is represented by a vertical bar whose height is equal to the frequency of that value. The bars should be positioned so that they do not touch each other. In the same way, we may visualize the relative frequency table. Such summary is called the relative frequency bar chart. Note that the only difference between the frequency and the relative frequency bar charts is the scale and the units on the vertical axis. Everything else is identical. In summary, to construct a bar chart or relative frequency bar chart, we first obtain a frequency or relative frequency distribution table. Then we draw a horizontal axis on which to place the bars 
and the vertical axis on which to display the frequencies or relative frequencies. For each distinct value, then, we construct a vertical bar whose height equals the frequency or relative frequency of that value. At the end, we label the bars and the axis. Frequency tables and bar charts are considered the most basic ways of organizing the data. However, scientists kept inventing the new ways of organizing data throughout times. Another way to visualize the categorical data is via pie chart. A pie chart is a disk divided into wedge-shaped pieces proportional to the relative frequencies of the qualitative data. In other words, the area that corresponds to D is 50% of the total area, the area that corresponds to O is 7.5% of the total area, and the area that corresponds to R is 42.5% of the total area. If you want to construct this by hand, you would have to use a protractor and a calculator to compute the exact values of the central angles for each sector. Luckily, every statistical software can create a pie chart with just a press of a button. For us, it is more important to be able to read the chart than to construct it, because nowadays, creating such chart and especially printing it out is considered a waste of ink. In summary, to construct a pie chart, first we obtain a relative frequency distribution of the data. Then we divide a disk into wedge-shaped pieces proportional to the relative frequencies. And then we label the slices with distinct values and their relative frequencies. Note that due to the absence of the natural order, the categories in categorical data can be rearranged for different purposes. For example, in Pareto chart, the bars are arranged in decreasing order by the category size, from the largest to the smallest. We discussed different ways to visualize the categorical data. The two most basic ones are frequency tables and bar charts.